it's me, Jennifer, Little Metal Foxes. And I just wanted to let you know that I've got some tool tips for you tonight. Hello, everybody. I'm going to get uh, Julia on here to join me. And hang on a second. Let's see what I got. There we go. I'm going to do this over here. All right. Hello. Hi hey. there. How are you? Hmm. <laughs> what is going on with my audio? Can you hear me? Know. Yes, I can. Can you hear okay. me? Um, well, I was trying to use my earpiece, which would be the, give a better audio, and I can't really hear you. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Let's see. Um, I mean, I can take it off. Here we go. Let's see what happens. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Let me turn up my... Yeah. Hi there. Hello, everybody. Hi. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can, I'm hearing you through the phone. I'm not hearing you my earpiece which okay. <laughs> would have been nicer would have given me more volume well okay, okay. sound sounds good so hello there hi everybody um uh oh hey brett um we're going to do uh a little disc talk tonight disc cutters and uh the like um i've got um a couple of tools and tips for uh for that and i know that a lot of people kind of like oh a disc cutter hooray I need one they're expensive and um, or they're cheap or you know I'll, I'll spend sixty bucks on one and this is one of the 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 few tools that I would absolutely say you get what you pay for you, you so you so get what you pay for yes and they are um, if you get a cheap one you know just to be able to knock a couple of holes in things it might make it round and you can cut stuff out, but you'll, I guess. you'll be disappointed. You'll be disappointed and you'll be frustrated. You yeah. should save your pennies, you know, ask for Christmas gifts or something or just, yeah. you know, yeah, I have a couple of, I have a crappy one and then I have one that's slightly less crappy and I really need, and I haven't been cutting a lot of circles, but recently I've been working on making chime balls. So I want to do oh. a class on chime balls. Yeah. And so the disc cutter is sort of mission critical to the whole chime ball thing. Um, and it's, they're just, it, they, the ones I have are just crap. I really it, it makes a huge difference. And I was oh, I know. something where I was doing a bunch of them. And I, I did it with my, my crappy ones that I got from actually one of the local hardware stores from Hardwick's. And, and I okay. was like, well, well, this would do, you know, and, I was really sad that, you know, all, all my, it was such a struggle. I had to struggle to cut them out. And I thought that that was the way I thought that, Oh, this is yeah, the way I mean, that disc cutters work. And it's mm -hmm. not. <laughs> it's not. If you so, learn on a crappy one, which most of the ones at like a jewelry school are going to be ones that have been beat yeah. to, if I can be, you know, they, they yeah. weren't, probably weren't great, really expensive to begin with and then they have been road hard and put away wet and just abused yeah. unconscionably yeah and, and then it's, you think that's how they work right yeah, and, and so then you never want to cut out this right yeah. and it's like you know the difference between working with um like kindergartner scissors versus yeah. working with a level of high well, right good, like good proper shears. finger shears yes yeah. nice yeah yeah, yeah. And it's like, you know, the ones that your mom would say, don't use my fabric shears on paper. You know, it's like. That your mom would say, just don't use my fabric shears, period. Don't touch them. Yeah, <laughs> right. So it's it's like that because they right. are, that's exactly what they are is a good shear. And they yes. sh should shear the metal beautifully when they're good quality. And it really, right. really makes a big difference. So um, once I put down the money for, I actually got a good uh, peppy disc cutter and <laughs> oh yes oh I was like oh huh that's the way a disc cutter is supposed to work ah <laughs> yeah so it really was quite a one of those moments where I was like I, I yeah so I uh, well, shall I show of, you had sorry, a bunch sorry. of tools that I was passing on to um, another a, a student who was coming out of school, and I was like, mm -hmm. "Have some disc cutters for free." <laughs> just mm -hmm. 
<laughs> take them with you. Um, you know, and I just, I, I don't know that you did that person stuff. any favors, Jennifer. Thanks. Um, well, I, I mean, my crappy, really. crappy dye punch and, and set <laughs> all my crappy files. And all I, my crappy mm, yeah. So, so to have something, you know, so she, I know, but um, is something better than nothing in this case? I'm almost not sure. Sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. But well, do you want me to show you the really crappy one that I have? Well, wait, wait for it because hang on, the 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 least expensive hole punch cutter that I've got that I do love this one, and it has been been with me since probably grad school. I think maybe I've okay, probably had it for for either you know when I was in Savannah or uh, grad school. So this one was eight, eighteen dollars. Nice. That's how much this one was. Yeah, don't use the pinking shears on paper. Oh, right, right. Thank you, Chris. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, it's a disaster. So this one actually, you can pick uh, pick up a tool like this, and it's a hole punch for metal that you can mm -hmm. get from places like um, Harbor Freight and hardware stores for punching holes in sheet metal. And this goes up to. Um, uh, okay, so now let's give a little three, caveat, though, because that, so, was eight, that was $18 30 years ago. Uh, they're still like around 25 bucks. You can usually okay. still find these for, you know, you know, under 25 bucks. And, um, oh, uh, Michelle says she found one for $5 at a garage sale. So these can be really handy, and you can change out the punch and the die with these. Um I like using these for very small circles, which it makes it real easy because you're like, it's like a hole punch right. and you can like make a hole down to, you know, teeny tiny size mm -hmm. down to like, yeah, they're, they're, those are good for, for small yeah. hole. If what you're they making are. is a hole rather than a disc. Yeah. So this has like the whole, you know, size, but you know, these do make uh, good holes, first of all. And I will um, file off the point because these have a little, um, like a little centering point on them mm. right there. And these are, I, I'll usually file that nib down because sometimes that'll punch a hole, a point and give it like a little boop in the, in the little disc that comes out. So a lot of times I'll file that point down. So, so I don't you have that. the disc? Yes, so I can use the disc. Right. And I was using these uh, primarily for things like, um, oh, little decorative dots and uh, tops for rivets and things like that. So mm -hmm. I would like punch out a whole bunch of these and I'll show you. I've got one. Come out. There we go. So they do like, whoop. Oh, hang on, I've got another one. <laughs> <laughs> It's like little so I, while, she's finding that, while she's finding her dot, I have one of those that's a Roper Whitney, the Roper Whitney Jr. And that's probably the most expensive version of this tool. So yeah. there are, yeah, yes, and somebody, li liar works with maybe a small pearl cut setting. And yes, yeah, yeah, absolutely, um, absolutely. They're, so and they're great. Say. They are a little heavy if to hold in one hand. And so you can buy a stand, a little stand thing that you can bolt to the bench that allows you to sort of hold it on at the bench. And then you can kind of right. do this with one hand to punch the hole. So if you're punching lots and lots and lots of holes, it yeah. makes sense to buy the little stand thing. Yeah. I just um, found, I mean, it's, it's like a heavy, do heavy, you know, duty hole, hole punch. Right. Right. So you sort right. of put your metal in there and you're like, punch. Right. And then they but it's a little hard to do it with off. one hand, right? Like if you're trying to position the metal with one hand, yeah, you kind of need two hands unless yeah. you have a fix to the bench and then you can, right. you know, kind of guillotine yeah. the thing. And yeah. the this does have a certain depth. You can only get the metal in so right. deep, um, which is you know, one well, of the drawbacks. So you can kind of only get it into here, right? You can get it in that right. bar. Right. So it does have a gauge. So yeah. that if you're trying to punch holes along the edge of something, you can change the gauge depth so that your depth is always the same. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Which is so nice if you're trying to make, um, like I used one when I was doing a spiral bound. Like if you're taking two pieces of metal oh, yeah. to be the binding oh, the yeah. sides of right. the book, right. you can use it to punch holes at consistent locations along right. the edge. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, this, uh, for me, and this can punch up to a certain thickness without, you know, right. breaking, 
but um, but it's it is a nice tool to have in the studio for twenty five bucks when you want to just you know punch a hole for something like a rivet or um, you know tubing to sit, to be able to fit through. It's it goes up to uh, like three eighths of an inch. You can um, also buy dies at, for different sizes. So it comes with I don't know like five or six die, but mm -hmm. I. I use mine a lot when I was making sister hooks, oh. specialty sister hooks, and I was making tube rivets, and I was punching right. the holes for the tube rivet, and I wanted them to be the exact size of my tubing, and the yeah. dies that came with the punch were not that exact size, so I was able to buy a punch and die that were exactly the same size that would fit into my tool. Right, um, oh, and which, I mean, for a small investment, for, you know, to be able to punch the holes and be able to get those little, little funky mm -hmm. caps. And, and Michelle's absolutely right. Uh, oh, Jennifer. Hi, how are you? No, a long time no see. Um, the, um, you know, the little pearl caps that Michelle was mentioning, you know, that's, you know, great for something like that. And, um, but it's, it's, you know, a great little tool for 18 bucks that can punch holes and give you great little, you know, rivet caps. or. Uh, you're caps. probably looking at 25 or 30 or 40 dollars i mean i think my roper whitney thing was like 50 or 60 dollars yeah. that was 30 years yeah. ago yeah mine's mine's like a no-name one from someplace right. like harbor freight so they really are not expensive um the right. other thing that i like for from euro tool this one is mm -hmm. uh, a hole punch as well and the little things that come out of it are like microscopic they're like uh, that one's one tiny. That one you can yes. use in one hand really easily. Yeah. Yes. And you can cut up to, um, it comes with, uh, this one came with two different ones. This was $16. Um, oh, nice. These you can get from different places and it can cut, cut up to holes in 18 gauge, which is really nice. And this That's one has a relatively deep throat on it as well. And you can change the, the punch size on this um, from uh, 1.5, um, to 1.25 to 1.8 so you can get different sizes and that's really kind of nice especially if you're doing something like rivets where mm -hmm. you are putting a very specific size through so these are great for rivet holes yeah it is, that um, is that was my issue too is that yeah you know with my tubing tube rivets it has to be the right size and so you have to have the right size punch to make the correct size hole right. for whatever it is you're riveting so, right yeah and then so, those little I mean, bits that come out can be fun little, you can solder them on, sweat solder them down onto something and put them through the rolling mill or, you know, yeah. there's all kinds of stuff you can do with them. Absolutely. And one of them actually is an oval. So you can actually get an Ooh. oval punch for those that as well. Size. Yeah, because the so, other punch you have is all only round. And square. Oh, 1.5 square. What? It does square too. What? So, I mean, that can be kind of fun. So yeah. these are not, not too terribly expensive, yeah. great for hole punching. And um, can give you an option again for small holes that are not too terribly expensive. So I like this. But working our way up the ladder, what's your um, your cheap? Yeah. Solution? Okay. So those are great, but they're small holes. Like the maximum you're right. going to get is like I don't know, three eighths of an inch or something. I don't remember how big. Yeah, those are. it's a little bit larger than a quarter of an inch with my. Yeah. My so that they're you're punching a hole. You're not making a disc really. Well, I'm making so, this with them. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. You, I mean, you, but they're small. They're little. Yeah. You're not making a chime ball that size. Let me just say. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no. Chime no. Ball. no, no quarter inch chime ball. <laughs> so, uh, so this one is the sort of classic, you know, the one that I learned on, I wrote on it top because, you know, you don't want to, there's a slightly beveled edge on the top and you don't want to flip it over. That's bad. Right. One of the things that is not good about this, this one is fixed so that the top plate and the bottom plate are attached and there's a gap mm -hmm. and the problem with the gap these are the inexpensive ones is that then the metal can move around in there and so you have to have a really good grip on everything to make your holes the better ones and the better designed ones like Durston and Pepe have separate plates and then mm -hmm. they will come all the way down and pinch your metal and so then it helps hold it in place and you don't get right. and whatnot. well the even uh, there's several i mean there are several examples even on amazon that you can find that are start at like 49 dollars and have those, the, pin, the plates that pinch that that have the, the plates that, that pinch down 
Um, right. They have like two pins that sort of drop down to the thickness right. of your right. metal. This has, this has and two you bowls. To, and you've got yeah. to balance it because. Yes, yes. Okay, now that's a separate thing. Yeah. So let's talk about that when we get to showing them what that one looks like. Before we get there, though, let me say something else about what is not fabulous about this type of punch. Right. So first of all, because of the fact that they're all where they are, it's great. You can get these big ones. You can put a piece of metal in where, however deep you want it on these big ones. But the smaller ones, you're limited because the, the back of it is in the way. But right. that is less of a problem than the second issue. So the first issue is a fixed width slit. The second issue is that the dies themselves are perfectly flat on the bottom. Right. Now, you would think that this would be fine, and you would be wrong. What you want is a die. Well, it, and it is fine if you're using a hydraulic press. And, and that is true. That is true. You if you're like using a hydraulic press, you. then you're all good. What yeah. you want, and I think, unfortunately, these are also flat. I think this is the other problem, is that the other set that I have, are they're completely flat. Right. And what you want, and Jennifer probably has one that she can show you, is the, the die, the cutting edge of the die has a slight angle on it. Because right. then it, it's it cuts more like a church key on a on a tin can. Or like a because, shear. A shear. Or like a shear, because the yep. point, the part that's highest, will cut into the metal first and then it will like zoop, it'll cut around from wherever right. it cuts through, it will cut around in both directions. Right. And so it take, takes less force to cut it, and it actually cuts more cleanly because it starts the cut, like it pokes it in and starts and the cut, and then and shears yeah, it around. It sort of cuts this like that. This shear everything at once, right. and it tends, well, to, it tends to do it like pastry. Like it pushes it through and leaves a really big burr. Is what well, happens. it leaves, sometimes it'll leave it like really domed as well, because a lot yeah. of times those are not machined very well, so you'll end up with like, a, a domed punch and a, and a real crispy bird edge. The, um, the other problem is with that gap is that if you're not holding on to everything super tight and it's not a good fit, then everything's going to bounce and you have to hit it multiple times and you end up getting like uh, 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 a know, lot all of, these. You get, so you get two problems. One, yeah. you get chatter marks on your metal. And two, I've had this happen with this one. If the, and so this is another reason why this, this set isn't in very good condition anymore. So if this goes into the hole and it's not absolutely perfectly straight and it hits the, the die at a slight angle, it, it will actually shear the punch. And so I've had little bits of metal get peeled off of the punch. Yeah. And then, it, so it's, it's basically the punch and die are cutting each other and they're making yeah. each other not be a perfect fit. So it's, Cause yeah. it's like, it's, yeah. it, you know, one is in there and then at an angle. And jammed in there and your metal gets jammed in there. Okay, now that's another problem. Yeah. So this set, this set is completely cylindrical. The, the ink that you see here is just ink. And so these will pass all the way through. Right. This one I think it's, yeah. In theory, these will pass all the way through. In practice, right. what happens is you hit them a lot. Let's see if this one will go through. Yeah. So this one will go all the way through, right? right. But you're hitting these things with a steel hammer. And so the back end start to mushroom out a little bit. And then if they will jam. It, if you're hitting it with a steel hammer. If you're hitting it with a steel hammer, which is why we recommend a brass hammer instead, Pete. We love these things. They're inexpensive. They're actually relatively new on the market. They didn't, when I first started making jewelry, these weren't around. Hardware stores had them. Hardware stores had them, but you didn't see them in jewelry. In jewelry. You know, Rio didn't carry them. Right. Um, and vinyl dead blows also work. Um, the advantage of this is that it's not going to absorb any of the blow. The vinyl dead blow absorbs some of the blow. This won't absorb the blow. But it also will not, because it's the brass is softer than the steel, it won't deform your steel. It will make marks on the face of your hammer, right, on the face right. of your um, mallet. So the if problem you, is with the steel. Yeah. So if it does get mushroomed over, you can take a file and you can just clean it up. But if it's mushroomed even just a teeny bit, it can get jammed in the hole. And then if it gets jammed, <laughs> then people will damage it trying to get it out. Right. right. Okay. So using a wooden 
Hot tip of the evening number one. Hot tip of the evening number one is don't try to force it all the way through if it's stuck. Go back the other way. So if it's if this is the top mm -hmm. and then it's stuck. Well here, let me put the one in that will stick. Because this one is too small. So that's stuck. Then you're gonna take a piece of wooden dowel and tap it back the other way. And you're like, but how do I do that? <laughs> because if it's against the bench, you can't do it. So what you right. do is you take a piece, you take an old tin can and you oh. set that on the bench like this so that this will sit over it. This is hard to do with my hands. Oops. That's really smart. I know. I have so, tried the tin can. Yeah, so you have the tin can sitting on the bench. You have the <laughs> the um the die that's stuck upside down. The pea, upside down on the tin can, and then you take your dowel and your mallet and you back it out, right? Yeah. And then it will fall in here because otherwise you you have to do it like over the edge of a table or something, and then your die falls out. I mean, it's not good. You don't want to slam these things around. No, the I've actually thing I recommend I've used have I've some always rubber. Always used a um uh like an open vice, like setting it on top of a vice and where it's open. And oh, but then it can fall through and that would, you know, now this is actually stuck. Uh, I love some cheap rubber pads too. You can buy this stuff by the foot at the hardware yeah. store. Get some of this and cut up a few of them. And then, you know, it'll help keep the noise down <laughs> when you're doing this. Um, yeah. so, so that's that. The other thing that I don't love about this second set actually is that, these dies are designed so that they have a little edge so that they are not designed to go all the way through, right? Oh. I mean, that's okay. Yeah, they don't. They won't go all the way through. They have oh. a, uh, this part is, the top edge is, is it a cloud. It's, yeah, it's not p perfectly smooth, um, which is fine, but it does mean you have to bang them all back out, right? Right, right. And you, you can't use it. <laughs> You can't use one of these. So how they're stored is also not trivial because this is how this one comes in its little box. You can't use it like this with all the dyes in it. So you, right. have, to take, you have to take them all out. You have to dump them all out into their box. Yeah. You know, and then there's a mess of dyes in the box that now have to be put back yeah. into the thing. I had, for this one, I had made a little stand like when I bought this one I made a little stand for it a little wooden stand for it so this is where the base sits and I can take that yeah. out and then all the dies sit here so that then I take out the one I need and put yeah. it in there and here's well, my tin can some part companies of the base. Do, do make those that come with it yeah some Sorry. companies do make those that come with it yeah it's nice to have so this is what I'm saying it's nice it, you know the, a few extra dollars for the stand that holds all the dies so that you can just take the punch part out and then take out whichever die you want and you're not right. fannying about with a box full of dies like this. Yeah, yeah. It's, well, and, and then you have to uh, find, put them all back in at the end is yeah. annoying. Well, what and I? Michelle said that uh, when she's working and you know, with small children sleeping in the next room, uh, which some of, a lot of you do, um, it's, <laughs> uh, she'd use her disc cutter on a sandbag on the concrete floor and that would deaden a lot of the sound. Yeah. That's really smart. That's really Which smart. Which is really smart. Like the closer you can get to the ground, <laughs> if you have to do it on a table, do it over the corner, over the table leg, so that the yes. fork is going straight through the top of the table, down through the leg, and into the floor. If you're doing right. it over the, the main part of the table, there's a lot more of this going yeah. on. It's like hitting yeah. a drum. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Absolutely. I, what cool. I would teach this at the Pratt, I would be like, and you all that are doing this are going in the back room yeah. because it just well, made me crazy to listen yeah. to. A lot of people will use uh, like stumps, which work really yeah. well. They'll have a good yeah, stump. Yeah. And that is kind of nice because that absorbs a lot of the sound as well. So yeah. what I'm The stump nice doesn't have to be just a cut stump. You can go get an old piece of butcher block. Oh, sure. You know, like, you know, you can get something that approximates a stump that isn't an actual piece of a tree. Yeah. The, um, the surface that I like to use is I like doing this on wood for a couple of reasons mm -hmm. as well, because these, the, the cutting edge on your die, um, the dapping yeah. die part or the, the cutting die is 
usually a sharp edge. And if you have a sharp edge on that, you really want to make sure that you're not dulling it by smacking it down onto an anvil or. Um, yeah. Oh, definitely. Using... Definitely yeah. do not cut discs over a metal surface. At least have a piece of rubber in between your surface and the disc. The, the precision ground faces of these dies in, in theory, they're precision ground and you don't want to slam them into anything, which is why I also don't want them rolling around slamming into each other in box. I'd like right. them to have their own little place that they live. Exactly. Right. Um, yeah. well, especially made a comment, or no, Robin. Yeah. Robin made a comment. If you're using one that is, you know, a very good one, you, d you really want to keep those edges clean and pristine and have a storage system for them. So they're not cutting into each other. Um, or rolling around in a box loose. Yeah. Right. And yes, Robin said that uh, she had one and got stuck the first time and used a brass hammer and cheaply made ones. Yeah, they'll mushroom out pretty quick. And yeah. You're, you know, they're just made out of cheap steel a lot of times. I mean, you know, again, for 49 bucks or, you know, a, a, an inexpensive disc cutter, you're, you get what you pay for. And right. But I've got my peppy one right here. So show us a good yes. one, girlfriend. So because now we've one. told them, we've shown them two crappy yeah. ones that I have. And I need and, to, you know. And I really, I really want to show you the difference here. The, um, and I, I waited for the peppy tool one to go on sale. Um, our students usually get a discount with peppy tools as well. And I got the one that came with, and I love these, the, um, the centering dies as well. So if I want to do something like cut a um, washer, cut a washer, I can center these really well with this shape. They also have a number of dies that are in different shapes, and I would definitely not get a cheap shaped die because those things are absolutely the devil, you know, to cut if they don't have a magnificent edge. And you're going to pay, <laughs> uh, you know, three hundred bucks for a good one that has like a star or a rectangle or ovals or, you know, they can be really expensive, but, um, but I got to tell you, man, they will cut beautifully. So, so um, Wirework was asking if we use beeswax or burlite. And honestly, I don't, but yeah, I should. And now I will tell you this, if I were going to use a lubricant, I would use a liquid one or one that's really, really soft because the burlite, because it's a solid, it's really designed for, things that move really fast and are going to be moving fast enough that they'll melt it's, it. It's a silicone wax. So this silicone wax does have slickness and okay. it's, this one actually works really well. The uh, Peppy blade butter is actually fantastic because it's much smoother and um, uh, yeah, and gives you that liquid, the, the liquid for life or a light wax or a light lube works great. I, I don't like using beeswax, beeswax because it's a little bit gummier and it has yeah. a tendency to get on. Yeah, I don't use beeswax. I, right. I like the silicone waxes or uh, light oils a lot better mm -hmm. because they are they're cleaner. Um, they will not prevent. They will not uh, create rust. They don't attract moisture, and some right. oils will attract moisture. But don't so use WD forty. Do not use WD forty. Yeah anywhere near any no, of no, your no. tools if it, it's no, no, no. hygroscopic no. it like grabs no. yes Boop. here we so, go yeah. there we go but kurabara okay. camellia yeah. oil or something um yeah. or i mean three in yeah. one is fine but three in one gets really gummy when it gets old and the nice thing about the kurabara camellia oil is that it's very very light and it stays really viscous and runny like its entire life yeah, right. So this is the uh, the peppy. That looks sexy as heck. It is. And it comes with this really racy red um, uh, pad neoprene. down below. Mm -hmm. The neoprene pads. So this set came with like the lube, the the centering parts, and all the dies, and this is, or the punches in the die. But so look how nice that is. Your punches are separate really, from your dies. Yeah, you know, I mean, really, your punch, really nice. you take your punch out and then you select you're sorry, you take your die out and then you select your punch and right. everybody else just stays in bed with their little and, spot. And I love that it's laser etched with the sizes on there. Because nice. a lot, and, and this one goes up to an inch, which for nice. most of the stuff that I'm doing is, is a good size. Um, and you can get oversized punches and dies that are, are really nice. Um, this one, uh, I, this is one of my roller mill textured from an etched plate. 
Ta-da! Ooh, you, you did the, uh, the roller or the uh, uh, etch in a bag this weekend. And so this is uh, an etched brass plate that I used for my roller uh, rolling mill and, into copper. So I've got a nice little texture on there. So I was going to say, if you're going to use a plate that has texture on it, put the texture side down um, so that yeah. when you when you punch through, you don't get any sort of echo from your uh, punch on the plate. So if you're trying to capture oops, a specific um, spot, for example, uh, turn it over and line it up. And the thing I like about the peppy one is I can close this and it has open and close right on the knob, which is awesome. Um, <laughs> but that way I can see and get it lined up exactly where I want it, tighten it, and then I can flip it over and it's not gonna go anyplace. This also, uh, the really good ones, this has three alignment pins. So I don't have to have a balance on this on the opposite side. Wireworks was just asking about having a shim on the other side. And so yeah. again, if you get a really high quality tool, you don't need that. Because it, it is balanced. Do it. Yeah. Right. It is balanced. So this one, let's see. Woo. Hey, where are you? Let's do that one. Oh, a little bit smaller. Um, the other thing I like about these is that they are, um, one, they've got a beveled, you can see that bevel. Now this is another, yeah, so, okay, right. great. So they have the bev they have the angled cut edge. Yeah, and yeah. then they're reduced size on the back end. So they've had the back part through. of the punch relieved. Yes. Right. So it doesn't and, get stuck. And I've got a beveled edge on the top. So this is really good quality steel. It's got a, a mitered or a little bit of an angled shearing edge. So it cuts through like scissors. The back end isn't going to get stuck because it's thinner than the cutting edge. And, but it'll keep it straight because of the front part. And the top of this is beveled. So it's not going to mushroom. And it's designed to be used with the brass hammer. So I've got my brass hammer for this. Um, and I will just uh, put... Um, a little bit of a what lube on the cutting edge. No. Move that out of the way. And come over here where I can do, and I'll show you, this is, um, and I'm usually doing a, a wooden surface and you can see, I don't know if you can see in the reflection, but um, you know, anything that I, if I'm using my, um, especially this, I, I don't want this impact to drive into steel. I want this to go into wood so it doesn't hurt my cutting edge on my, my dapping punch or my, or on my cutting punch. Ready? You paid a there lot of money for that. Right. So go. this is a, a two pound hammer, a two pound brass. Look at okay. that. So like I probably butter. could have knocked it through in one. And look, row. and then no, no die getting stuck. It nope. just like pops right through. Popped right it's out. Great. And look at that edge. There's nothing, yeah. right? on the back, that's the cutting side. So there's no <laughs> like bouncing around. There's no echo from, you know, this or chatter from this going through. It just cuts a really beautiful, clean, clean edge. Look at that edge. I right? know, that's awesome. It's really nice. Okay. I'm like um, so envious. I'm gonna have to and, give away these disc cutters, these old disc cutters <laughs> that I have. Well, I gotta tell you, I you know spent some money on this one and I am so freaking happy that I did. Shout out to Peppy Tools. And Swanson makes a great version, and you know I love Swanstrom. theirs as well. There's Swanstrom um, and Durston both. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Swanstrom one I know that um, uh, Rio Grande carries, and it's a really fine one as well. But I got to tell you, man, I I love Peppy. I love their their quality of their stuff, and they just do a really good job. Um, the it's other the thing one that I has the little note, handle. I think yeah, it's the Swanstrom one that has the little yeah. handle, and that's yeah. a little pain in the butt because it's it confusing. Sort of drips out. And yeah, yeah, it gets in yeah. people's way. People hit it sometimes and then it gets damaged and that's a problem. Um, that okay. If you, if you do have a bit of a burr on the disc and he has a hip is there anything you can change? Um, you know, take a look and see what your gauge is. I, I find that if you're using the, the peppy one, um, if you're using a little bit of burr life on that and the, and make sure you're using the right size in the hole that you've got. Um, I've got, I mean, it's a little sharp because it's cut metal. It compresses it when it goes through, but it mm -hmm. doesn't, it's not ragged, you know? I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's really clean when it goes through. Um, so you're always, you're always going to have 
a bit of a burp, right? You're never going to have, it is never going to be 100% right. smooth. But um, you can see, I mean, that's a but really but that's clean close. cut. Yeah. Right. And, you know, I mean, yes, that, that cutting edge is sharp, but it's not raggedy. And mm -hmm. that makes a big I've difference with high quality. Yeah. I the other thing that it looked like it had drag marks, right? It's like it had oh, these yeah. long sort of tendrils oh, yeah. of see burrs it. off the edge. It was a mess. The other thing I'll say too is if you're uh, hole punching something that has texture, always make sure you're using uh, rubber or a uh, suede or leather pad underneath um, with wood so that you don't damage your texture when it goes right. through. So right. I always use, um, like I said, I always turn it face down so my uh, dapping die or my uh, cutting die isn't damaging the, the details on the front edge or front side. There's another reason for that too, but, Jennifer. But also having this nice clean surface so it doesn't damage the imprint, my texture. Yeah. Because, so, because, so I was just going to say, there's another reason for making sure that your texture is face down when you're cutting, that you cut from the back. Because since you will always get the tiniest burr, you want the tiniest bird to be on the back so that you can sand it or clean it up easily without damaging your texture. Right, right. right. So in, in addition to the fact that you don't want the punch to mar your texture as it's punching. Yeah. I mean, the front of this You want to be able to really clean smooth. it up more, most effectively. Yeah. Yeah. And you can see that the edge on the front of this is nice and round and smooth. And it kind of and it's always going to be the same. Yeah. It yeah. stretches as it goes through a little bit. That's just what the metal mm -hmm. does. And then it's got that little bit of a razor sharp edge on the back. And that will easily come off with um, a little bit of sanding or filing on that edge. So easy to do. Um, yeah. So, so see, Lyra works with question about th anything you can do to minimize the burr. So what you could do. Use a, a good sharp tool. Use a good sharp tool. Yeah. Now, there is a debate in the disc cutting world about whether or not the metal should be annealed. And... This yeah, that's a good some question. People, some people say it should be annealed because it will cut more easily, which is true. And some people say it should not be annealed because it will cut more cleanly, right? Because you will have less of that, it'll behave less like dough because it won't be as soft until it will tend to stretch less. So you can try it and see. I mean, it depends what you're cutting. If you're cutting something that you soldered something onto, <laughs> for some reason, like if it was a layered thing, you know, then of course it's going to be annealed. But if you're cutting something that you put through the rolling mill, right? Try cutting it fresh out of the rolling mill, and try cutting it when it's been annealed, and see if if you notice a diff if there's a noticeable difference for you with your cutter, and if there is, which you prefer, right? Yeah. Here we go. So, um, but I did want to show the centering tools for these. Oh yeah. Um, so anytime if I'm trying to cut, like you know, it's really hard to get these guys lined up. Uh, without something to sort of, um, uh, you know, get it centered properly. So this is just great because it creates a natural sort of centering spot for the metal. So I can kind of open this up so it's loose and push down on my centering tool, centering die, and mm -hmm. just kind of roll the metal around so they sort of line up and then tighten it back down again. And, and then it'll be a perfect out. center. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Nice. And so then... Oops, wrong one. And let me grab the right one. Not so, all sets come with centering dies. So if you're really interested no. in cut washers, yeah. do your deal, due diligence and check because some sets come with centering dies or have centering dies that can be added on for not very much cost. And other sets have centering right. dies that are considerable additional cost. So, you know, just FYI. And look how thin that is. Like, no distortion. Nice. Oh, man, that's gorgeous. Isn't it beautiful? Yeah. So, and that's a one inch. I mean, and that right. took me, you know, three doink, doink, medium doink. hits. Yeah. And how thick, how thick is the metal you're using? It's 20 gauge. Okay. Or 20, maybe 22 now because it's been mm -hmm. rolled down. But, yeah, so my, my pattern's not distorted. I've got, you know, a washer that I can use for all kinds of details or hoop or whatever. And, I mean, that cut through, like, you know, really super easy. So it's just, you know, especially if you're doing this a lot, you don't want to have something that's going to, you know, create a lot of wear and tear on your body. So using the right tools for this, 
especially if you're doing this a lot. And I know like Michelle does this a lot. a lot and, you know, yeah. having the right tool for this and, and, you know, having something that's heavy enough to knock this through easily, but mm -hmm. this will do um, instead right. of trying to use something that's a lighter weight um, that isn't going to like, like punch it through immediately. Um, this takes all that, that effort out. And you should be able, especially the small ones, I can do those in one strike. You know, those are, I'm telling those are you, easy. The other part of this is that the time wasted and the frustration oh, yeah. of having to bang your die out with a wooden dowel over a tin can. Oh, yeah. That's a lot of extra time for each one of your <laughs> gifts, right? Yeah. You add up that amount of time and it's like, how much is your time worth? <laughs> right? right. You start yeah. adding up that time, it's like, hmm. This thing is going to pay for itself really quickly if I have to take a lot of these. <laughs> yeah. So it cut through the first time, but I just knocked it through the rest of the way. And there that was go. one one strike. You know, one strike. Right. Tiny dots. Yeah. Simon. Oh, my God. What are you doing, buddy? <laughs> I want one. So it's okay. Hi. I'm making noise. I know. Uh, Simon's like, what's happening? <laughs> what are you so, doing? You're talking and you're making the banging yeah, noise. Yeah. I know. So, but yeah, you know, I, this is just, like I said, it's one of those things that, you know, if, if you're doing a lot of disc cutting or, or you need a disc that are, hi buddy, it's all done. It's all done. Um, um, you're doing something where you're having to get, you know, really accurate circles and, you know, this and uh, a good circle template make all the difference in the world. You know, yeah. I mean, I, it's just, it's worth it. And especially if you're selling stuff and you're having to cut out circles, um, yeah. Production. Oh my God. yeah, this will pay yeah. for itself in no time at all, you know? Yeah. So it's, it is totally worth it in terms of time cleanup. And, um, I was talking to one gal and she was doing a, uh, a circle piece and she was cutting all of her circles out with a fricking saw and no, I like, no. I like, mm -mm. and selling the pieces. And it was, it was taking her an hour to make these circle pieces. And I'm like, you can make a circle piece in like 30 seconds. Right. You say well, like this. I mean, I can make a circle piece with my crappy circle cutter, this cutter in 30 seconds. You can oh, make yeah. like five of them in that amount of time. So, I mean, you know, and easily, and it's in the wear and tear on my body, the amount of time spent making something like that is so much more efficient. And, and especially if I'm you're so trying to sell these pieces, <laughs> especially if you're trying to sell your pieces, you know, in terms of time, management you you can recycle the metal but you cannot recycle your time you know that's there's true. you know i mean that's that's all there is to it so there's my bench hello and all my hammers and <laughs> let me turn this around hello hi welcome back, welcome back. so um but you know i mean it, having having a a tool that may seem expensive up front it is an investment that's going to last you hopefully a lifetime in, right. your, in your studio, you when, you make, when you make a bigger don't let it get rusty. Like right? Don't right. don't don't store it over your pickle. <laughs> no, don't do that anywhere. No, anywhere near your assets. So, I mean, this is another good reason for using a little bit of light oil or lube on it because who yeah. cares if the top face of the of the you know who cares if this part gets rusty? But right. you definitely don't want the insides of these to get rusty, and you don't want these right. cylindrical parts to get rusty. So, right. you know, light oil on those, I would definitely recommend. Absolutely. Anyway. Absolutely. Well, Julia, or something. yeah, what? there you go, everybody. Good luck. I know. Yeah. Get yourself a good disc cutter and save some time, save some money, save your body. And I know uh, I'm going to, I need to get a good one and then just get rid of these. Yeah. 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 Take it up a level. Donate yeah. those to the, um, the Seattle Metal Skilled Silent no, Auction. Silent Auction. <laughs> yeah. 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 Do that. Yeah. Oh, a good China Hutch. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Then you and you know, if you've got, if you've got a good cabinet where you're storing things, you know, get a thing of desiccant um, or one of those. Um, uh, the H2 you know, out. Yeah. Something yeah. like that. That's like wicks out moisture. And I've yep. got a couple of them that are, uh, it has like desiccant beads and it like drains down to the bottom, sucks all the moisture out of the air and collects it put one of those in the cabinet and it'll keep stuff in the cabinet dry, which yep. is really kind of nice. Um, it'll keep things from getting humid in there. So I usually end up putting um, 
like with a lot of my tools that I've got that are in wooden boxes, I usually have like, I'll, I'll go back every now and then and put some oil around the edges just to make sure that it sort of keeps some of the moisture out. Um, oh, but you can, okay. put, you can put little desiccant bags in, in those things too, and it'll help keep the, the tools clean and dry. So there's anyway. a great product there's called H2 Out. Mm -hmm. um, they're desiccant beads inside a stainless steel container, and so you can bake them to not to, to bake the, the water out. So they're reusable. So right. they go they're blue when they're when they're dry, and then when they're when they've absorbed all the water they can absorb, they will go pink. So when right. the little desiccant beads are pink, you put it in the oven for three hours and bake the water out, and then you put it back in oh. your car or your boat. They're made for the for boats, right? Because you know boats right. do get kind of wet. Um, so anyway, right. Well, um, we've got some classes coming up. Do, I mean, you're, the next one coming up is the gold down. bezel class, which is going to be. On really Thursday. cool. I, yeah. so I'm, I'm going to come and do that with you. I have my I have my little gold uh, gold fill bezel wire yeah. to yeah, put right. the bezels on on the the peacock ring. You know, all the little stones. Right. So yeah, yeah. Have all the so, stuff. Michelle. Um, yeah. So I, you know, she, we, she said it was talking about the the silent auction. <laughs> get, get oh, free with the free magazines with your, with your crappy yeah. disc cutter. <laughs> But, hey, board, you know, board joke. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, yeah, we're going to be talking about adding gold vessels to the work uh, using gold fill. So, uh, so, uh, we, probably shouldn't sell this, we probably shouldn't sell this class that hard because it's not currently sold out. Oh. <laughs> so we need, if you're add, interested add in taking it, two. get on our so, mailing list and then you'll know when, yes. we, when she offers it again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, let's see what else. The Diamond Burrs uh, Demystified is coming up. We've got three in stock um, still. There's three seats left. Uh, the Diamond Burrs Demystified is um, a really fun class because it's got, um, you, get, you get your Diamond Burrs figured out. So Diamond Burrs are <laughs> well, great Well, let's cut like China cups and stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know? So a lot of people want to learn how to like cut China cups or plates. Um, be able to so bigger uh, holes in stone beads, that kind of thing. To mm -hmm. cut, I use it for cutting beads in half, and I also use them for um, uh, carving into stone. Mm -hmm. I use them for um, actually, if my bezels are slightly too small, instead of scrapping my bezel and starting over yeah, or damaging down my bezel a little bit, I shave my stones yeah. down. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah. you can do all well, kinds some of things, like notches and all kinds of stuff. So some cabochons are cut so they have a really perpendicular edge at the bottom, and that makes them really fragile. And so you can yeah. bevel the bottom edge yep. a little I bit. Bezel, I bevel the bottom edges. I'll cut notches in stones for prongs and all kinds of stuff. So my prongs sit into the stone, which is really kind of oh, awesome. sexy. Um, yes. Oh, sexy! Yeah. So, okay, so yeah. that still has room in it. Yep. And um, that's be Helen, on, and Helen is doing another glass class. Yeah, I know. And she's know. got the, um, yeah, the, the glass class is coming up on uh, the 19th. And right. she's got some room in that class. So if you're interested in, in finding out more about how you can work with glass and include that in your, um, in your work to make cabochons or use the, the, the glass uh, fused pieces for all kinds of things in your jewelry, um, or she's doing general. it at jewelry scale. It's all about jewelry yeah. scale, used glass at jewelry scale. You know, and, and um, a lot of people have the tools to do this in their studio already. You don't already. have to they just have don't know specialized it. glass <laughs> tools for that. So some of these you can do. Uh, she did the, one of our tool talks recently showed us how to actually use uh, stringers of glass mm -hmm. and make loops and things with a candle. You can with a candle. Do that I know with a candle. So there's a lot of stuff you can use in the studio, like your Smith Little Torch and a simple like light kiln, like one of those little, you know, beehive kilns. Like the beehive kilns. Mm -hmm. that are and they're really, not like, that, they're not ridiculously ones. expensive. No, yeah. the little ultralight ones are very inexpensive. And you can use them for, you know, kombu, you can use them for yeah. enameling, you can use them for granulation, you can use mm -hmm. them for, for fusing glass. So there's all kinds of really cool things you can do on a very tight budget to include, you know, fused glass in your studio. So you don't have so money because you just bought a disc cutter. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. 
exactly. So you've cut your disc and you're going to stick some glass on there. That's what we're doing this weekend. Um, and then I've got working with Gold Phil coming up on the 25th of June. And, uh, and it's a really good economical way to add mm -hmm. some color and gold to your pieces. Um, gold Phil is, gold. Gold Phil is yeah. still real gold. It, it just has a gold. nice layer and all the gold's on the outside. Doesn't need to be solid gold all the way through. Right. Nobody's going right. to see the inside, right? <laughs> well, the inside looks just like the outside because it's the same color. So it's, exactly. um, yeah, the uh, working with Goldfield is really kind of nice because Goldfield is actually 5% gold on the surface. It's 14 mm -hmm. karat gold on the surface. And um, it's by weight, it's still 5% gold and it's recyclable. So you've got, you know, uh, a good gold product that wears like 14 karat gold for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, very, very different than like gold plating. It's, right. you know, a thousand times thicker than gold plating. Um, right, right. So it's a very different wear. But you can add that to all kinds of pieces, and, you know, whether it's a bezel or uh, doing the whole piece out of a gold fill um, and, and add a, a whole other colorway to your pieces, your line, your designs, and another option for your, for your customers if you're doing, if you're selling your pieces. Um, but you know, some people are like, I, I, I want to wear gold, but it's so freaking expensive. This is, a I know I, I wanted yeah. to put, I want to put 10 bezels, right? Five bezels on each side. Cause this little peacock had this five and I wanted them to be gold because I want the color. And I'm like, I can't afford to do that in, yeah. in gold, but with gold fill, you know, yeah. I bought, right. I don't know, 15 inches of gold fill. Of course it doesn't have the price on here. I was going to tell you how much it was, but. I don't remember how much it was. It was, I don't know, maybe $50 or something. Um, yeah. Right. <laughs> Liar works so sadly. I can't do filigree and gold fill. Yes, sadly. Yeah. That's true. But there's gold plating. <laughs> there's a limit. But you can do gold fill with. Yeah, you can gold plate that stuff, and it looks beautiful. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, there's options. There's always there options. Always. Um, but, yeah, and then we've got the cut card setting also coming up on the I know, June that's this one. I love that. Yeah. And those are like traditional engagement ring settings, the, the, the four prong settings. And um, yeah. I'm sorry that the, the, the focus, you can't really yeah, grab the focus. Flip, flip the camera around and, and do, do it on the other way. Yeah. A lot of times it'll focus better when you do it that way. There you go. Aha. There they are. Yeah. Really? Yeah, baby. That was beautiful. So you I can see that. the the four, you know, the cuts together. Yeah. 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 So it's like four prongs and it's, it's so cool. Cause you, this is great for all kinds of sizes. I love that, that four prong setting for square stones or, or, mm -hmm. uh, or cushions. Or over stone. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, lots of options with those. And you've got a uh, one that looks like a bat. That's awesome. I do. Bat. I do. <laughs> this one, let's see if I can, um, let me see if I can sh hold up a piece of paper or something that to yeah, get yeah. you uh, a little they're like little bats so, it's here. awesome it's it's the the pieces are apart let me see if i can hold it so you can see it there you go so see yeah. the little bats yes <laughs> indeed. The little bat so it's so, so funny the, each piece of it was each each prong, prong. Each, each, prong each prong is a bat. bat and so when i made the there cut card part each half is actually two bats right right and, and, you know, this is so highly customizable that it's oh, yeah. an amazing setting. I love this setting. Um, and I use it a lot when I'm doing, you know, higher end stuff um, because it does create a really beautiful traditional four prong setting. So, yeah. yeah. You can do it with more than four prongs. Absolutely. You can do yeah. six, but the math, because of the angles, to do six or more is that's an advanced class so if y'all yeah, are loving the heck out of the cut card setting so what i'm going to do is the four prong the one that jennifer and i both have done quite a bit so that'll be the four prong that will be this class coming up but if you guys really really like this and want to do more complicated ones then i'll i'll figure out how yeah. to share the math because i know not everybody wants to do the math and i yeah i i, I don't i don't even want to do that on the six prong ones However, yeah. I do what like you can do is like for things like ovals yeah. and rectangles. So exactly, that's, exactly. That's a lot easier. That's much much right. easier. So you can do instead of just doing two that lock in together like this, you can do 
two sets like this and then one yeah. along the middle so you can do a stone that's that's oval or like a baguette stone or some right. preform thing right like yep. sky salute. absolutely um, yeah absolutely um there's all kinds of ways to even do preform stuff um that's just crazy but it's crazy. fun i i like this kind of like super fiddly precise stuff because mm -hmm. i just like getting it you know, like shoom, i like it to just slot together um, and once you get the a tight fit, soldering it is a piece of cake. But we will talk about all the little tricks to make it go. Right. Um, what's in these oh. stones is just inexpensive CZs. So, you know, please don't run out and buy something expensive. Just, oh, gosh, you know, no. No. get an eight millimeter CZ. There you go. That's what yeah. those are. Well, mm. awesome. So we've got some, uh, and we got the wax carving for stone setting coming up in July, which is going to be fun. Yes, which, and is, which is a six week class, right? Right. Yeah, so it has. Yeah. It gives you time to like do stuff, work on it during the week, come back to the class, have questions. Yeah. You know, yeah. you get you Absolutely. really get a lot of Jennifer's time on that class, which is yeah. good. And there's lots and lots and lots of possibilities with wax that you that are impossible to do with sheet and yeah. wire. They're just yeah. yeah. So you can yeah do all kinds of carving to set stones, and I can and it's easy. It seems to me to be so easy to do um, that that even people in a beginning class can, can tackle stone setting and wax. So yeah, there you go. Um, but um, yeah, we've also got in July, we're going to be posting our uh, core skills Academy class, uh, which is going to include wow. uh, intro to uh, sawing, filing, um, drilling and uh, torch. Oh, so we're going to have, four, yeah, we're going to have the four basics on there. And those will be set up for people who are really wanting some beginning classes. They're going to be an hour long and are going to be available as a core curriculum along with the safety class, which we highly recommend that everybody take. It's only $10. It's a two hour lecture that, that Julia did earlier um, uh, in the fall. And it, uh, we just felt it was so important safety wise for people. If you're not taking classes with us, if you're taking classes at a school, if you're working in your own mm -hmm. studio, it's really critical information for metalsmiths. And I, for 10 bucks to, to have some it's, it's confidence basically, in what you're doing and knowledge of yeah. what you're doing and work safer, it's, but, it's worth every penny. And it's right. just administrative costs for us. But we want exactly. to make sure that it's everybody... Okay. Yeah. It, it, the class, it's a two-hour class. It should be $40, $45, $50. And so, you know, really, we offer it for 10 bucks just because we want to make not enough money to cover the cost of warehousing listing it. Space yeah. and, you know, listing it and all of that. Yeah. But really it's, you know, it's more of a public service <laughs> yeah. that we're doing because well, we want you all to be safe. And we really felt that it was important enough for everybody to be able to have access to it. Um, right. So. We didn't want to do it intermittently because then that limits your access. So it made more sense to just like sell access to the, yeah. to the recording. Yeah. And you have unlimited access to it. So right. all of our classes, you have like a 30 day access, the live classes with this, right. it's unlimited, you know, as long right. as, as long as we're around, you'll have we, access to we it. have to keep it up. That you, this is part of why you're paying the $10 is because yeah. we have to have a place for it, for you all to be able to watch it from. So. Right. right. It's fine. We, so, we're, again, yeah. we want you all to be safe. So. Right. Okay, I'm Very excited nice. you're going to do cuttlefish casting too. Me uh, too. In July. I know. I'm that is such that. a fun so class. It's, it's uh, cuttlefish and gravity casting. So we're going to talk about cuttlefish, but we're also going to talk about a lot of alternatives that you can okay, use right. for the mold, which include things like um, oh, charcoal and all kinds of other materials that you can use yeah, cool. that, that work great for two-part molds. Um, but um, somebody was asking, uh, one of our students was asking recently, uh, I just answered her today, not, not all of them have the cuttlefish bone texture, which is nice for some things. You don't necessarily want that. And there are ways to do multiple part molds to get uh, 3D pieces like rings and mm -hmm. things like that too. So um, I, cuttlefish bone is one of my absolute most favorite things to work with because I, I love the texture and the immediacy of it. Don't love and the smell though. I do. Really? You I love the, that. Jennifer's like, oh, the smell <laughs> of burning cuttlefish. No, not a fan. I am. I mean, to it's, you, it smells like it smells like cool castings are coming out in the second. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I have so many. To me, I have so many great memories 
mm -hmm. of, of teaching people with it and working with it. And um, yeah, I just, and it's, yeah. It's like the culmination of all that work, the yeah. carb and everything. And it's like, oh, then you get the smell. It's like, and we're done. Yeah. Yeah, I also, She's, I mean, very I I also you. love the smell of like, you know, Puget Sound when the tide's going out. So. <laughs> okay, you really are. I like, this, really, I, I like that. You that really are part otter, sea. aren't you? I am. I love the smell of the sea. And, and it definitely is in cuttlefish bones. So. Yeah. And cuttlefish yep. bones. Wait, hold on. Um, for those of you that may not know what a cuttlefish bone is, there it is. Fish so, bone. bones. There it is. Love it. There you go. So, yeah. So, cuttlefish. I've bones never done great. two foot casting or sand casting, so I'm uh, glad you're going to talk about those. I'm not. A, I'm not a huge fan of sand casting because it is a little less accurate. Um, mm -hmm. But I really do like uh, using uh, charcoal, and there are a number, and like tufa, and a bunch of other things that are reusable. Where cuttlefish mm -hmm. is not reusable; it's a one time, right. one time go. Um, but uh, there are other ones that you can use multiple times, like tufa and, and uh, charcoal, which we'll, we'll talk about um, in a class more. So, so yeah. you got a so question you about a small studio very easily. So. Robin is asking, she says, I've heard people say if you have a shellfish allergy like me, that cuttlefish could be a problem. Do you know if that is correct? I actually think, Robin, that you've probably heard that uh, maybe from me. <laughs> I have, uh, that's one of the things that I'm always really careful about that I'll mention in the class because it, it I, I don't want to take that risk and I know some people are extremely allergic to, to shellfish and it is the shell of a shellfish so if you know you feel like you are you don't have a problem handling the shells and working with the shell itself great I would definitely be wearing you know a mask for sure when I'm working with cuttlefish but there are alternative materials that work very similarly, like this is a soft charcoal. Um, mm -hmm. You can get the same kind of effect in casting out of. Um, and the benefit of using the charcoal is you can get multiple castings where you right. can't do that with a cuttlefish. So, right. Robin yeah. says she's definitely allergic. I yeah. think cuttlefish is not for you, Robin. No, I would definitely go with the soft charcoal instead. Right. And soft charcoal, like I said, the benefit is you can use it repeatedly. And right. uh, for a lot of, lot of things in the studio, not just for the casting but it's got lots of great uses. So if you get a piece of the, um, the soft charcoal and you wanna do the class, it's the same process. So mm -hmm. we're just gonna be talking about gravity casting, um, how to melt the metal, what kind of things you need in a small studio, how to do this with you know, any of the torches that you happen to have in your studio. So if you're working with you know, a, a propane torch, a butane torch, a Smith Little torch, a, a settling torch. It's got you covered. Know, we got you covered. Whatever, whatever. She's going to explain. She's going to yeah. tell you what to do. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so we're going to make it real, real easy. And, and it should be. It's fun. And to have access to that and be able to make your own um, castings and to be able to recycle your metal. Uh, mm -hmm. If you're doing it on a small scale and you need to have like a little sheet of metal that you can, you know, remelt some scrap and hammer it down. So you have like a a plate for a small stone. You know, it's, it's, oh, like the earrings. Thank you. My thank Kathleen you, noticed her earrings. Go, Kathleen. Know, I've, got, I've, got, I've got a whole bunch of them over here. That I'm I know. This on. is her thing. She's been just <laughs> head down, working hard. Look at these. What? Those are awesome. I know. And yeah, I am loving this series. I am having so much fun. Those are my favorites. Those are the Those ones are that I think are really cool. These just make me smile. They're fun. None of them are for the week of heart. Um, <laughs> the no. of heart or the week of earlobes. But, week of um, earlobes. <laughs> but yeah, I'm just, I love this one too, because it has like a little peridot down there. Druzy. And these are sapphires as well. Sapphires and coral. Pearl. Druzy. Peridot. Yeah. But I love these, um, so these, cool. gold, these gold sheen sapphires. Wow. From, uh, from Gemstone Legacy. So shout out to Gemstone Legacy. I love them. The quality of the stones that I've gotten from them has just been absolutely stellar. And uh, I've got a bunch of um, rose cut sapphires and rubies and uh, uh, the Milagano. Uh, I think I got the Milagano agates or uh, jaspers from them as well. But all the stones I've gotten from Gemstone Legacy have just been spectacular. So it's been. But you've been doing some inspired. spectacular things with them. So thanks. Yeah. Look for them on, where, where are they going to be? On your Etsy store? 
Uh, they're going to be on my, I'm actually redoing, Helen's actually redoing my website. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I'm going to have a new website. I have, I just hired a new photographer today and uh, who's got some new models that I'm very excited about. And so it's going to be a whole new, a whole new me. And it's going to be all of my, the new stuff and uh, my, yeah, cuttlefish bone based uh, production line nice. as well as the one of a kind pieces. So there you go. Thank yes. You, Kathleen. Yes. She I just got a cut here. on Saturday. Yeah. I love the bangs. I love that. Your fringe. I love your fringe. fringe. Rocking the fringe. Yeah. Everybody's like, fringe. like, you're, you're so shiny. It's like, yeah, it's getting whiter and whiter. <laughs> it reflects yeah. more light. <laughs> Somebody said something about you know, a bunch of old women in the metal guild, and I said, "I said, wait, let me, let me turn it around. There we go, purple." <laughs> so yeah, I got all that purple underneath. So there you go. All right, fun. Um, so Robin was asking, "Are the classes all watchable after the class?" I have a market on Saturday, so I wouldn't be able to watch real time for all of them yet. Yeah, you would have absolutely. Uh, if you sign, you have to sign up before the class runs. <laughs> that is the one caveat. You have to sign up before the class runs. But if you're signed up and you can't attend the live class, right. then you may watch the video. You have access. To, everybody has access to the video, whether you attend it or not, for 30 days afterwards. And then you can always email us. The reason we love to have you in class live is because it, it sort of makes everybody more present in the moment because they're really paying attention. And then because then they can ask questions. Yeah. Right. Uh, and we love so, having your questions. And we love that people learn from each other, you know, like right. the students will offer their their experience because we have lots of jewelers who take these classes with us. And so yeah. they bring their own experience to the table. So I, this part of what we love, we were talking about this the other day that we, we always learn something from- Absolutely. From I, I, and it's, and it's, it's a huge benefit to everybody in the class. We really mm -hmm. wanted to create a platform where we know, Julia and I have taught so many classes for so many years that one of the benefits of being in person is that you are connecting and sharing information with all the students hmm. in the class too. And a lot of the students in our classes are not beginners. A lot of them are from, you know, middle to, you know, high level metalsmiths and all of them have great tips and information and resources right. and like Kathleen and, um, and Nina. Hi, Nina June. Look at you. Um, so, you know, uh, so a lot of the people that are in our classes, um, you know, share a lot of that information. And it's, you know, right. we learn stuff, you learn stuff. Um, so it's really great. But anybody, if you can't make the class, because things happen, we know, you know, things come up maybe at the last minute, yeah. or we've had somebody that, that fell down the stairs and broke their leg um, that was like, I didn't make it to class because I had was at the hospital. It's like, you've got access to the class. You're fine. Got and, access. Questions, got you covered. and they had questions after the class and they emailed us and we're sure. happy to answer those email questions. Always, always, yeah. always, always, so. always. Might take us a couple days, you know, because we all have other jobs. But right. Um, right. but we will always answer. And if you don't hear from us, if you email us and you don't hear from us, just email us again because occasionally things do get lost in cyberspace. I was going to say. <laughs> no, if you don't I mean, hear from one of us. Me. If you don't hear from normal. one of us, what you, what usually will happen is you're going to hear from more than one of us. Right. Yes, like usually what happens is yeah. like Helen answers and then I answer and then Jennifer weighs in. So yeah. you might get sick of hearing from us. But yeah. um, but if you don't hear yeah. from anyone, that's suspicious. The end email of the us again at that point. Yeah. The end and of the just, world. And we're come. in the process of hiring a new administrative assistant. So. I know. Yeah, I know. That's exciting. We're not, not going to say anything more because we have to like make sure that all of that is fine. So don't give anything away, Jennifer. That's right. And we're also uh, at the end of the month a little late but at the end of the month going to be celebrating our second anniversary for little metal foxes and so we're going to have yeah, some yeah. Um, have some news for those people who are um our valedictorian and our salutatorian and some uh, surprises and and stuff like that so we're going to yeah. do that at the end of the month so yay anyway okay our, our so, second anniversary actually already passed but yeah that's okay a little late, a little late <laughs> they were but, you know, yeah but we've been doing this for a couple of years and we've loving it and years. And we're going to keep we, doing it. Absolutely. Yeah. So if you miss any of our tool talks, switch over to the YouTube channel, Little Metal Foxes, and you can see all of our tool tips there. We've also got a lot of other free content that you guys can watch at any time. There's no cost for any of those. So please uh, go 
learn on on the YouTube channel all you can. Uh, there's tool tips not just from from me or Julia, but and Helen and uh, Chris from Lion Punch Forge, Michelle from Lee Airworks, um, and uh, gosh, we've had uh, we've also got some interviews and. Uh, playing with fire classes. That yeah, classes we've had the play. playing with fire stuff is up there. You can watch those for free. <laughs> and watch, watch us be, you know, ridiculous in the studio trying right. things out. We should do another one of those. <laughs> well, and we set up your your oxygen concentrator. I know that was, that was fun, great. and I have been using it a bit. I I have to, you know, I, I still need to kind of hit my stride with it. Yeah. But, um, yeah. But yeah, well, it's, it's good to have I, it all like, done and like, ready to go. And I think I need one now. <laughs> I need a I need a better set of disc cutters and you need an oxygen concentrator. I do. I do. All right. What happens when you have friends and you show them their cool for life? I know, I know. Everybody wants All right. All right. Thanks everybody. Join us for class coming up and keep your eyes out because we're gonna have a whole bunch of more classes listed, especially coming up. Soon. Fall. I know, I know. We're getting up we're working on it. We got we got more coming. Absolutely. Um we've got guest artists that are gonna be uh, teaching like Michelle Lear from from Lear Works. We've got yes, Michelle. Chris Anderson from yeah, from uh, Lion Punch Forge. We've got AJ Powers going to be teaching drawing class again, which was mm -hmm. a huge success last time. Everybody was really pleased with drawing for jewelers and uh, some design classes and more. So keep your eyes open for the classes that are coming up. And thanks for joining us for Tool Tips tonight. Thanks, Julia. Bye. <laughs> we'll see you later. Bye. Bye.